Welcome to the Game Experience. In this episode, I got the chance to speak with Aussie rapper Birdbrain. Now, I found Birdbrain via Instagram a few months back. One of my friends shared one of his rap covers or remixes. I liked it and I, I went through his Instagram and, and I thought, man, this, this guy's pretty cool. I like his uh, flow. I like his style. I like what, what he brings to the uh, genre of Aussie hip hop or Aussie rap. So I reached out to Birdbrain and asked, would he be interested in a video chat or to come on my, my channel? And he accepted. So I'm honored for that. And this is Birdbrain's first interview as well. So I asked him a few things around his name, how he got the name Birdbrain, a little bit of a backstory towards him, how he got into uh, rap and, and a few other things. We also went into down the rabbit hole of how the CIA infiltrated the American rap culture as they went through a, a, a part of the music to try and steer people to perform or commit criminal acts so that they go to jail because the American prison system is privatized so i hope you enjoy this video now the full length video went for three hours and i've cut uh, a part out of this which is just before we go into the freestyle and the rap sections now the rap sections i'll air the second edit from this and then followed by this i'll bring snippets out of this within various topics of what we actually speak about so i hope you enjoy and thank you for coming along to check it out Yeah, yeah, I can try to kick a freestyle if you want, where I just make it up on the spot. Kicking back and we on this. It's Bird Brain and my homeboy John Wick. Yeah, Ooh. and I don't know where I've been in it, but I'm just tripping in the game experience. And I've been doing this shit for the nation. The whole country living in a simulation. And I don't really know where they go to stay tame. I need some energy. Send me some lines, man. But that's okay, bro. Ooh. I don't got no ponytail. And I just keep it trying to win. I don't want to ever fail. And I don't know what you got on. I'm going along we just went to nt and ran a marathon and that's no. okay because we don't want to be wasted it's okay because that thing took three days shit with an ankle calf muscle yeah yeah you can ask it next of kin because your calf muscle might be behind your shin but you still win you're a king it's all good you found the holy grail now brush out your ponytail and i don't mean to be nice or be a meanie i'm just kicking back in a red and black beanie yeah yeah we got the camera rolling this plan i ain't stolen all right nice was that it all come through or? What's that? Was that we're on, we're on, we're on. I, was, I wasn't going to miss the juicy bits. <laughs> ah, are we? Oh, <laughs> I'm thinking. I'm thinking. Uh, if he's going to rap, what's he going to throw at me? I'm like, I've got to. I've got to hit record right. real quick. So, ah, uh, you cheeky bugger. All right, so we're rolling. Yeah, look, hey, I, I don't have to put that on. I can edit that out. All good, mate. All good. So, brother, thanks for. Uh, doing this it's um i appreciate it before we get fired away there's something very interesting in the the name bird brain where did the name bird brain come from what's uh what you, what first of all what's your uh your, your real name unless uh bird brain's your uh your government name but but tell us a bit about that we were you people want us just to bird. call you by bird people, brain people call, me bird. people call me bird so We'll keep it at that. We'll, we'll, we'll keep it a bit mysterious. Um, so the way the way Bird Brain came about, right, it's a bit of a two-pronged story. So I actually changed my rap name to Bird Brain in 2012. Yeah. I started rapping in 2007 and I used my football nickname as my rap name because when you first start rapping, you don't realise, like, you're going to have to build a brand. Um, you know, you don't really think much about your name. You're like, what do the boys call me? And that's what you call yourself. And I guarantee most of the rappers out there, the names they run with is what the, the lads call them. Like, so 
I used mm. to play a lot of football and the boys used to call me Lynn Bird. So my original rap name was Lynn Bird, but it was mm. L-I-N, which is part of my last name. That's all you're going to get of the last name, the L, the I, and the N, right? <laughs> and then the second part was the bird part. But the bird part actually came from an Aboriginal word from the Noongar tribe because I come from Perth, uh, WA, and I used to knock around with the Noongar boys and play yeah. footy with them, and I was and all my best mates were Noongars. So Britia in their language means boss. And so they used yeah. to call me Lim Britia, which was half my last name and then boss because I was a bit of a mad unit. So that, that, that was – I got that name out of respect. So they, used, they were saying that I was a boss, which – so the word boss in our slang in local means like wicked or sick or dope. Uh, um, it, so it's, it, it was a compliment. So they were basically giving me a compliment. They gave me a nickname that was a compliment in their language. That's why it's not spelt the traditional way to spell bird, right? B-U-R-D-I-Y-A. You can look it up in the, um, in the, the uh, what do you call it? That dictionary? Hmm. That online dictionary? Uh, the, the encyclopedia? No, no, there's a dictionary that tells you all slang words in different different languages. Oh, okay. Anyway, yeah, yeah, yeah. Long story short, so Lynn Bird was the nick, what I used to get called at footy. So yeah. when I made my first rap song and it goes um, artist name, I was like, fuck, what's my artist name? And I typed in Lynn Bird and I just ran with it. So from 2007 to 2012, I was called Lynn Bird. And the reason I changed it was because every time somebody said, what's your rap name? And I said, Lynn Bird. They said, what? They go, pardon? and Because it's not a word. So it wasn't computing with people. And people would call me Limburger, Lindenberg, um, all these different variations that weren't my actual name. And I'd have to spell it out. And it got very irritating. So I moved to Melbourne in 2012 and jumped on the D Corp Cypher, which is one of my most viewed um, tracks and uh, it was quite a big song at the time, and it's still uh, pretty iconic. And when the boys yelled out, how do you spell Lindbird? I go, fuck Lindbird, right, bird brain. And from that <laughs> moment on, I was bird brain. Yeah, wow. And the reason I changed it to bird brain was because you say bird brain, you only have to say it once. There's a cartoon character called bird brain. Um, you know, like it's it's it, you get a visual with it straight away. Um you know, like it didn't have to be repeated and people just got it and like yeah, I'm fine with that. So it served the purpose. I think it, I think it's um it's it's basically the question of 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 bird because obviously it's spelt different. So there's you wouldn't tie that to the other spelling of like a normal bird because if you were bird brain, you would be called that. So I wasn't sure if it was bird as in you pronounce like the like bird or whether it was like just sli slightly a different tone to it but so so b-u-r-d bird means boss in it's b-u-r-d is half of the word that means boss in noongar language so it's b-u-r-d-i-y-a britia it's pronounced so they used to call me lim britia because I used to shirt front people left right and center so I was a bit of a boss on the footy on the footy field so gotcha. it had a meaning Gotcha. Yeah. So that was my specialty. Um, no, I was a bit of a headhunter, but that's another story. But um, so, yeah, like that name actually means a lot to me. And this is actually the first um, official interview or podcast that I've ever done. So that story has not ever actually been told publicly. Like, where did my name come from? It's a first, brother. Mate, <laughs> saved it for it's, you. It's, it's a first and, and it's here, man. It's here. Yeah. Um, yeah. It's uh, wow. Well, no, that's that's um quite unique as well, and quite quite special too. Um, I didn't actually catch the the first part where you said you grew up. I I sort of heard um that no, I didn't hear quite hear the area. So I'm from. I grew up in Fremantle, Western Fremantle. Australia. Yeah. yeah. So it's the, the southwest region of Western Australia is is oh, the, gotcha. um, the WA the country of the Noongar tribe. Yeah. Gotcha, gotcha, gotcha. Yeah, yeah wow. Yeah, yeah. That's, so all my that's best wild, mates were Noongars when I was growing up yeah. in the hood. Yeah, yeah, nice. That's wild. Yeah, I'm not too f familiar with like how Fremantle is. Um, I would have, if someone was to say Fremantle, I wouldn't have thought it was WA. I, I would have thought that it was um, uh, 
uh, Vic- Victoria somewhere, but I think I'm just okay. getting, but yeah, I think I'm getting mixed up with um, did, did, free free mental WA or free mental Victoria. Uh, Frio's Perth, man. Perth WA. Per, 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 yeah, yeah, cool. Yeah, I remember yeah. there used to be a um a TV show like a, I think it was like a cops. It was like a cops one, and I think they used to film a lot of it in Fremantle, and you used to see like just wild shit happening. I think it's the yeah. same the same area. Or might uh, yeah, I'm not I'm not too familiar. My, my my friend used to live um out there, but he's just recently moved, packed up, moved to um Orange County in in LA, and. Cool. With uh, a girl from over there, so yeah. nice. But, yeah, so um, so when I was so nineteen ninety nine, when I was seventeen, I'm pretty sure, and I would have to like double check this, but I think so. The suburb of Frio or Perth, where I grew up, was called Hamilton Hill, and we'll have to we'll have to fact check this, but. I think in 1999, it had the highest car theft rate in the country uh, for suburb and for cars getting stolen f- for within a certain area. You, you might be able to fact, fact check it. Um, it was definitely a headline in the paper. Now, whether it was like clickbait for the new for the Sunday Times or the West Australian back then, just to get just to sell papers or not, but I definitely read it. Um, but yeah, they're like, and so they brought immobilizers in. Um, co- uh, compulsory immobilizers. Whenever you sold a car, it had to have an immobilizer fitted in it from around about 98, 99, 2000 forward. Um, and I can, off the record, pretty much say that quite a number of that car theft statistics was coming from lads off my footy team. So, um, yeah, I was right in the mix. I wasn't a car thief. But um, I knew quite a few. So, yeah, yeah it, was, it was a wild place to grow up, man, back then. Much different to now. Yeah, it's it's got – well, I mean, this is – I've got the only stat that come up now is 2021, but that's 2021. So you're going back um, almost 20 years. It probably, probably could have been. It was before Bluetooth was invented. I mean, it might not even be recorded on the internet, you know. Yeah, man, it's wild out there at WA. Yeah, it's wild, wild west, man. But no, one yeah. of my other friends, he, he owns a supplement store. He shared your page, I think, a couple of months back. And you know, you got like that split screen and someone sort of spits some rhymes and then someone else comes over and, 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 and starts rapping as well and you sort of rap over it like a bit of a competition. So my friend my friend shared it and I, I watched it and I was like, I was like, oh, this is – this is pretty cool. I was like, I, I said, I was like, oh, I like this. And, and I, I sort of went through your page a bit and, and then I, I think I hit you up probably a little bit after that. But, but one of the things that I noticed and I seen is, um, it's just that sort of different Aussie hip hop sound that was like, sort of, it stood out and it was unique, you know, um, best way to sort of, ex. Uh, yeah, because I, I want to compliment you. I don't want to like make you think that, um, like you know, I'm giving you bad criticism or whatever. But no, um, no, go for it. Yeah, but um, so you know, in the in the nineties, uh, like I, I, gr- I grew up eighties, nineties. You know, Run DMC, Public Enemy, Ice T, Ice Cube, NWA. Oh no, not so much NWA in the eighties, but my sister was like big into like rap um yeah you know public enemy ice t all of that all of those um uh, artists and then coming into the 80s um uh, sorry into the 90s i'd probably say by the time i was about 14 uh 15 i started hanging around a, a group of people that was sort of like in graffiti and i you know I used to graffiti stuff and i and i also too used to rollerblade so there was a group of us that were sort of rollerbladers Did you say rollerblade yeah 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 cool 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 Go on. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I did. I, I used to um I put my first pair of inline skates when I was um I think nine. Um and then as I got older I wanted more and more and more and I got thirsty and uh, you know, ride ramps and skate street parks and and stuff like that. So um 
yeah, used to, used to grind handrails and jump stair gaps and uh, no. yeah, used to be used to be pretty wild on them. But um, so so yeah, so there was a a few of us sort of like this little breakaway group, and and we all graffitied and and stuff. And, and back then there was this Aussie hip hop group that was also into graffiti, which I didn't associate with, but they just sort of rose up. Um, and and it was F. FWP and it was Funnel Web Productions. Okay. Um, and there was a group of graffiti artists that there was, I don't know, there, there, there was a few of them. And that, that was the only one I could actually, that I, that I could actually remember back then. And then, you know, growing up and going back and forth from England to Australia, you know, Aussie hip hop in the early 2000s was sort of not really, uh, that well to me this is just me speaking um you know that wasn't really there on a global scale like a global stage where you could say like this is cool because because back in the early 2000s you know you had 50 cent get rich die trying you had m&ms you had dr dre's you had um all of these other rappers where this was like like gangster rap and this was fucking like kilos of coke and fucking all of this wild shit where Aussie hip hop, like we don't, we don't have that, that type type of gang life. Right. So it's, we're not getting kilos of Coke from Miami and fucking all, all these types of shit. So it sort of, it sort of was in like a different category. If you looked at American hip hop to Australian hip hop. Right. So to me, it was all a little bit clingy, like clingy, like, Oh, it's just, and, what I found was like over the years, like it all sounded similar, you know, and, um, you know, I'm not, uh, sort of bashing anyone's sort of name here and, and I'm not really too familiar with the, the circuit of artists in the Australian world, but, you know, once, um, sort of 360 came out, you know, 360 sort of had his own unique sort of style and his own flow, and then, you know, then you had that, cur you had Cursor and then all those other ones. So I uh, sort of like, you know, Hilltop Hoods, um, the, 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 the obvious ones. Um, and, uh, and yeah, so it was just like, to me, I, I was never sort of really drawn to it because it was, to me, it's sort of like it had something to prove in a way of like, um, like American rap or, or, or English types of rap. Um, so yeah, so it's sort of just been a bit, a bit standoffish. And and then I just heard your your set your sound and you know and 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 it was just I was just like oh this is cool like this is sort of something that I've been sitting with for like the last twenty years with 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 Aussie rap and um, and I was like oh this is cool man this is like I, I I like this 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 way about it and um and Thank yeah you, and I'd um I don't know if I'm just rambling on here but um, no, no, I've got off. yeah yeah um and and I think that um. Yeah, to say like uh, in a way of like I've gone through and I've heard a, a couple of your things um, and, you know, like the do – you, do you class them as like a cover over over it? Or no, a cover is when you, when you sing their their lyrics as well. So you've got – Yeah, what's so it called? I've been doing – rem, you call it a remix. When you when you use somebody else's beat and you put your own yeah. spin on, on their song, yeah, that's yeah. – we call that a yeah. remix. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So, so yeah. yeah. So your, I've heard like a couple of your remixes and stuff and yeah, they're, they're quite cool. And, um, and yeah, man. And, and, and as you know, yourself, the, the story and the history, I reached out and I was like, like it, it could, like, like I fucking smiled, you know, like I was watching some of your videos and I was smiling. I was like, Oh yeah, this is, this is fucking cool, man. So I'm like, yeah, I'd love to just reach on out and just have a chat because, you know, I sort of feel yeah. like I've got a little bit of a, um, I don't have a history with rap, but you've just heard that part of it. So, so yeah. 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 No, nah, totally, man. Um, when you first wrote to me, you were like, you told me that you used to listen to a bit of iced tea. Um, I worked out pretty quick. We we're around about the same age. So yeah. we would have been listening to the same stuff around about the same time. Um, and the reason I jumped in when, when I said, did you say rollerblading is because I actually played rollerblade hockey, man. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. And How I cool. accidentally brought my football attitude to it. So I used to knock kids down in that as well. It was like when I was 13 and I had a pair of Brett Hull inline skates that I had a mate from Texas 
and he gave me his Brett Hull, who's an ice hockey player at the time, was yeah. one of the most famous ice hockey players. Yeah. So he had a a, um, a brand. He was sponsored by Inline Skates as well. So yeah. he gave me these gun pair of um, really fast rollerblades, man, and you couldn't get them in Australia. And so I joined Inline Hockey. My dad was the coach. I got um, it was just a team of five, and I just grabbed a few of the footy boys, and we just used to shirt front people on the at, down the roller rink, and yeah. I used to get yelled at by parents. Um, that's why I was like, did you say rollerblades? Because that brought back the, me the memories flooding. Um, yeah. yeah. I used to play yeah, dirty. I, I played, I played, um, I feel like no, roller, roller hockey. Um, roller hockey. That's did you say called, ice yeah. hockey or inline, inline hockey? Uh, inline blade. Like at the roller skating rink. Yeah, I got blades, you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah it's yeah. ice hockey, but uh, like no ice. Yeah, I got you. Yeah. So, um, yeah, I'm trying to think because there's sort of two nay. I, I played, I played it myself. Um, yeah, it was, for, it was so much fun. It was wicked. It was like yeah. five on five. Yeah. Um, fuck. What, what were we called? I can't think of what we called. Um, we called this certain name, but but yeah, I think I played two, two seasons. Um, I used to have this trick where I'd go around the net. So I'd I'd, I'd skate around come the net back. and just come in and and just whip it in and. Yeah. I was just a goalie scorer, uh, I think. Goalie yeah, scorer? I, had, I was the goal scorer. Yeah, I had this trick where I didn't know how to stop, but I could go really fucking fast. So I just used to beeline the goals and just go, boss, and take the goalie out at the same time. <laughs> he was my brake pad. <laughs> yeah. yeah, cool. Yeah. Yeah, um, yeah, yeah. yeah, so you said, what did you say you started getting into it, like in 2007? Or what? what when did you start? It's oh, like, rapping? Rap, sorry, I've I've segued back over to the, no, no, the rap course, story. Not a, yeah, yeah, I'm not I'm not a um in, in a pro inline hockey guy. Um, yeah, so the rap. Um, yeah, man, like basically, I I started recording in 2007, but mm. I'd been rapping for a long time first. Um, so I was 25 before I ever wrote a song, yeah. but I'd been freestyling for like. A decade solid already and the way i learned i didn't even realize like, i never wanted to be a rapper I, like I, like i i felt like i wanted to be some sort of entertainer um because I, I enjoy entertaining people and and when you said uh the, the raps made you smile the videos made you smile that that like made me feel good because that's literally why i do it like i like i just want to let people like put a smile on your face escape from your day it's escapism. That's that's why I make music for, for people. And I escape while I'm making it. And when people are listening to it, that's what I want them to get out of it. So that's that's beautiful. But um, yeah, so like I've been listening to rap forever, like since the cassette days. Like I've still got Snoop Doggy style on fucking tape and I've still got a Walkman. I kept them in a shoebox. They're just over yonder. I could probably show you after, but um. Yeah, so pretty much um, back in the day, it was tapes and then CDs got invented around about the time I was in year seven. You would have been about the same. So the only way you could get an album is to buy it from the shop. So you didn't have a million songs to choose from. You couldn't just get the best song from each album. You'd have, if you wanted to do that, you'd have to record it off the radio, but that's not the story. So we had albums. And me and my mates, um, we used to smoke a bit of weed in our teenage in our teenage years, and and we'd, we'd just put music on when we did it, as you do. But we wouldn't have YouTube; it wasn't invented yet. We had CDs or tapes, mostly CDs. So we'd put a CD on, and we'd listen to a good CD. It would be NWA, like um, Straight Outta Compton, or Easy E, Easy Does It, or Snoop Doggy Style, or Tupac, All Eyes on Me, or Biggie. Um, you know, all the classics, like I was listening to all those artists when they were still alive, right? Like I was spewing when they died. I can remember I can remember where I was. Like most people remember where they were when Princess Diana died. I remember where I was when I found out Easy E died of AIDS, bro. And I was fucking spewing, man. Because I didn't even know. I didn't even know. Yeah, he died of AIDS, bro. Like he died before Pock and Biggie got shot. My mate who introduced me to Easy E, um, brought the newspaper clipping into school and like that was the the back then version of sharing a status showed me the newspaper clipping easy e dies of aids and i was like bro how he wasn't even i'm sure he's not gay he only raps about pussy 
Like, how did he die of AIDS? He just rooted too many chicks. But um, so I literally remember, like, I was in grade nine when I found out EZE was dead and I was spewing. But um, I say that to say this. I listened to so much EZE when, or, you know, that's just an example, but EZE was um, one of my favorites and still is, that I, I learned entire albums off by heart. So without realizing it, I learned the flow. I learned song structure. I learned everything by muscle memory from rapping along with it and learning it for so many years. And then when we'd be out, you know, riding push bikes around of, of an evening, um, street drinking, you know, fighting, whatever we were doing on the streets because we were pretty rowdy, we'd all we'd, we'd get drunk and we'd just rap the whole album. We'd just rap it and rap it and rap it because we all knew it because we were always all together and we were always only listening to the same stuff. We'd share a headphone each. Like music was just the, the our escape. That's why I make it for people to escape because it really helped me escape back in those days. And um, all my me and all my best mates, we all knew the entire album. So without realizing it, I learned how to write songs just by learning songs. But I didn't even know that I knew how to write songs. I didn't even know that I knew how to freestyle until – I started changing the words while we were all rapping and replacing certain details. I would change suburb names to our suburb. I'd change when he took, when, when easy would rap about um, MC Ren or Dre or, or the other lads, I'd put my mates names in it. And before too long, I could freestyle entire songs and just change all the lyrics, but still didn't know that I could rap. Didn't think that that meant I could rap. Didn't ha have anything to, like, didn't think I was going to be a rapper didn't have any aspirations to write a song. I'd always written poems in primary school. Like they used to laminate me poems about don't litter and this and that, you know what I mean? Like I always, I was always pretty good with um, English and the written word and creative writing and, and, and narratives and essays. Like I didn't have to study. I just fucking just put the pen to paper. But like the, the foundation was always there. But, be, but when I was about 18, started going to parties with DJs and stuff. And every now and again, this was in the times that you were saying when Aussie rap was a bit of a joke. It wasn't even a genre. It hadn't been recognised yet. Hilltop Hoods hadn't dropped Nosebleed section yet. Bliss and Esso hadn't done a tour yet. Um, 1,200 Techniques were just coming out on Triple J and stuff like that. Um, there was a few crews, but it was a very, very, very niche thing. Um, and there was very little exposure to it. So I, none of us even knew that it was a thing that, that, that could happen. But um, I'll never forget, I was 18, went to this party. A guy was rapping. And all the boys just started pushing me towards him, like battle him, battle him, battle him, like rap against him because we'd seen it on telly. And um, so I just started battling him and absolutely slaughtered this guy. And I got so much adrenaline from it because everyone was like, so like, oh, go, bro, go, um, that I had to go and throw up because I got such a rush from like absolutely nailing this dude. I went and spewed in a pot plant while they were all cheering still. Like, and that was a, that was a very pivotal moment. I was like, fuck, I think I can rap. But I still didn't write a song for another seven years. I just freestyled. Only freestyled. Yeah. Nice. Mm. Um, when you said then about you remember Lady Di's death, I, I definitely remember Lady Di's death. But what happened with Easy e was in 1996 i was over in canada i don't know if biggie died in 96 or 97 might have been 97 hang on no i'm thinking of tupac anyway no <laughs> i'm not confused about tupac and and uh and and easy -E. no went to canada and during that time uh I was listening to a comeback with like heaps of CDs and it was like, um, do, I think it was dog pound gangster. Uh, yes. no, it was like no limit and stuff like that. But I remember I came back to school and I, someone had this shirt wearing easy E and I, and I said something about easy E and there's like, Oh yeah, he died. And I was like, fucking what? And I think he died when I was in, um, Oh, well, I just don't even think it was a big, it was a, I, I don't know because it's it's weird because you'd think that it would it would be you'd hear about it right, but um because in year uh, in year seven I had straight out of Compton and and I'd always used to listen to it in in school 
um, it was at the beginning of high school. Um, and then, yeah, and I think it was like a year or two years later that, um, that that's when I went to Canada and yeah. And I seen a girl at school and she had the, uh, easy E shirt on. She said, I oh, died. And I was like, Oh fuck, I didn't even know. Um, and, 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 and that was, that was basically it. Um, but you, you, you maybe remember something else as well that before I went to Canada, um, I had my, my cousin stayed over and I played this song. Um, and I don't know which one, I don't know which one it is, but there's a verse in it. And the guy says, um, I pulled her panties down and the bitch, and the had, bitch a dick. had a dick. dick. First song I, said, I ever Damn. heard, bro. I was hooked <laughs> yeah. from that point forth. Yeah. I was play I was playing that at, at my house, but my cousin was was there and I, I had no idea, man. I had no idea what like and then probably like that day, like a couple of hours later, we we were talking about me going to um Canada. And he turned around and he said, Be careful because the girls have might have a dick. And it just fucking went straight uh, okay. over my head. And it wasn't until like years later and I finally got it. And I was like, oh, that's why my cousin said that because I had that song blasting. I was like, I pulled a panties mm. down. <laughs> and the bitch had a dick. Yeah, I but, said, damn, um, drop the gap from my hands. What I thought was a bitch was nothing but a no, man. No, like no. I know, <laughs> I know that whole fucking everything. That's what yeah. I'm saying. But yeah, that was the I first did. song that my mate showed me that. And I was just like, whoa, I had never heard any anyone say anything like that. And it was yeah. just so like, it just resonated. It was just like, wow. Yeah, bro. Fuck. Compton back then was fucking pretty wild. I think it's pretty, pretty wild. wild. I, I sort of question, I question the story about a lot of things. And I mean, obviously we all had, um, recently over the last couple of years, we had straight out of Compton, Comp Compton, straight out of Compton, um, movie that came out and, uh, Ice Cube's son played, him and mm. um but you sort of like just see you know like there was really no thugging you know easy e in the movie was the only bad one and they sort of captured this um sort of story of it was just police against them and you know there was this when they were on the side of the street at the front of the recording studio they were getting busted like they're getting messed about and then that's when they're like you know fuck the police and and stuff and um and yeah and just the way that they sort of painted dre um cube um as like just you know just they're okay you know but 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 easy -E was a drug dealer right so yeah. now you sort of look at the life of of dr dre um and you just sort of like you know was it was there sort of more to to that story like you know, the, there's rumors that that because there's a scene where Su Suj Knight, uh, that's how I pronounce his name. I don't know how you pronounce Sh Suj Knight, Shug, Shug, Shug Knight, Shug, yeah, yeah. Shug Knight, um, where Shug Knight uh roughens up uh Easy E, and they reckon that that in that in that scene that that was when you know they might have injected him with with HIV or or whatever, but. Um, you know, was that, was that a possibility, you know, did, did, is there more to it and stuff? So, um, mm. I, yeah, I, I actually forgot that that was a theory, but I would be very surprised if Suge was going around with, uh, needles full of AIDS. Like, um, one of the, I heard a similar story to that, but it was that, um, it was like an assassination, like the government injected him with it. But I'd probably say he got it from rooting, man. Like he was, he, he was, a, he was a G on the street. Cube was the writer. Dre was the producer. Mm. Um, Easy came in with the drug money and funded it. And mm. um, yeah, we we spoke um, about just some topics before, you know, like when we're chatting, and I and I mentioned to you about the. Um, the CIA infiltrating the uh, the African American uh, rap culture or certain individuals. There's there's some artists that talk about it and they they're pretty open with it. They said, "Oh, you know, like I was confronted and they wanted me to yeah. to um, you know to like 
I, I, I believe that sort of, I believe in things of like energies and frequencies and, and sounds and, you know, um, vibration. And I feel that, that there is a lot of s Satanism or satanic type of darkness in some songs. Um, the, there's an album with, that Kanye, yes, Kanye West um, made when he was dating Kim. And don't know if it was, it was, uh, I don't think it was Yeezus or I can't think of what the album was actually was called, it but it was 808 and Heartbreaks. What the album was called that? 808s and Heartbreaks, I think you might, is, might be the one you're thinking of. Yeah, go on. Yeah, yeah, maybe. Um, it's, is it like, not one with black Jesus as a song. I can't think of the actual song, but anyway, and I remember I was on the roof and I was working and, um, and I had like, uh, this album playing in my, in my iPod and I just, I just started getting angry and I, and I had to pull the, the headphones out and fucking throw them. And I was just like, Oh my God, like I'm just getting through this album. And I just felt like, you know, really, really weirded out. And, you know, after he separated from Kim, his music changed. Um, you know, you had, well, before, actually before that, you know, like, uh, gold digger and, uh, with Jamie Foxx and, uh, high yeah. school, high school dropout, was it? Or college, college dropout. dropout. Yeah. College, college dropout, dropout. That album, like that Great album up. was like before, I remember that album come out when I was in Tassie. So it was like maybe 2003, 2004, something like yeah. that. Um, you know, it was, it was quite cool. Uh, it was like Twister, uh, Twister and, it was that Twister era, you, you know, the artist Twister? Yeah, yeah. I, I know yeah, that yeah. album really well. Know. It was very yeah. uplifting and very orchestral yeah, 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 and yeah, sampling yeah, and yeah, sped up samples. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, yeah. And then, you know, then then he gets together with um, with Kim and the music went dark and then separates from Kim and, and, and goes from there. And there's something about that whole entire family where if you look at the history of who they've dated, like, you know, Kim going through uh, – Ray J or Reggie, whatever his name is, but saves me raining all their names and all their partners. But all of them have all dated somebody of status that is within the either African community or African culture, or but they're in like sports, NFL, basketball, rap. So they've infiltrated these certain artists or athletes or sport realms with their whatever it is their darkness their satanicness i call them the three witches you know but but they've they've done something and and they've infiltrated and and it's like you see what they've done to the men you've seen what uh chloe done to i think his name was omar you know, that other guy, Chris Humphreys, who played for Minnesota Timberwolves. Um, and, and 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 all of them was was slightly scarred by by the Kardashians. So you you look at what they've done and this destructive nature in relationships, in and out of relationships and stuff. And then you look at Kanye's music and you sort of you sort of go, hmm, like there could be some form of higher up, you know. Um, controlling or influence through music to emit frequencies. And then you, you go in and then you, you can go down the rabbit hole that certain Hertz, like 440 Hertz or 444 Hertz is, is um, I'm just saying 440. I don't know if it's exactly that, but, but that actually does put out this sort of frequency where it can sort of penetrate your, um, your subconscious, right? So yeah. the sounds can penetrate your subconscious and then you might get certain words that, that that can then put things in where it's like a a deep sense of programming, which can then sort of come out later in a, in a triggering word of like coming out of a state of hypnosis, right? Um, and you know, there's stories, um, and and I've only sort of lightly sort of touched on this. I've just sort of heard it, but I did sort of expect it anyway because after what I knew from hearing and seeing Kanye's music change, um, that, yeah, that government agencies have actually gone to rap artists and people to, we want you to rap about this type of stuff because it, 
it destabilizes society, you know, so um, it creates more crime, more division, more hate. And that then that then connects to, you know, them being in and out of jail. And you go and look at um, the system and the actual design in America for the African communities um, or the black African um, uh, is that there's incentives to separate the family and divide. So it forces the, the women to, um, to go down the, the route of uh, there's a name, um, but, but the, the, the route of abortion and then the, like a father that if they have a kid or whatever, then, there's separation of that then the father will go to jail and then the kid will get brought up and it's just crime 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 but then you just go like you just connect all of these dots and then you hit you go deeper into these types of stories and it's like that they're literally pushing you know th these types of people into in through the prison system because it, the prison system's privatized right so they're using music to fucking rip shit up by you know all sorts of stuff and and it's actually a thing, and this is something that you know that they done through the nineties and and into early two thousands, um, and that they still do today. So this is something that the CIA has infiltrated, and you hear of all of this, right? But then you look at music today, and it's like, well, that sort of stuff still must exist. And and you just look at some of the shit that Katy Perry sings about. She's always doing like you know Illuminati symbols and and stuff. So so the music industry man is is quite wild if you you know you go down that rabbit hole of of exploring and and when i when i brought that up with you you said that um that yeah you've that that you can add a little bit to it about the um the government coming into those artists and stuff and yeah i've seen something on youtube i forget which it's one of the bone thugs in harmony members and um he came out with it it might have been crazy it might have been busy busy bone or crazy bone i'm not sure i can't confirm that but you might be able to find the video. Um, and what he basically said was they, a handful of them got pulled into a room. They got pulled aside for a meeting with the label. And um, what, what it was uh, a, some, a certain uh, company had built jails. Now, they wanted supply and demand. So they needed to put people in the jails um, to run them like to basically make money out of them, long story short. So they, they had a business plan. All they needed was people in the jails. So they needed, um, basically they needed marketing. They needed crime to be marketed and glorified. So they um, they they pulled aside a bunch of, of you'd call them influencers for the day, but influential um, rappers. And you, you can almost bet your bottom dollar that they did the same thing with Hollywood. I've, I've heard that CIA is like, pretty much infiltrated Hollywood as well. And it's how they sort of, uh, you know, basically it's a propaganda machine. So they knew that the rappers had a massive influence and they knew that they had the attention of the youth. They wanted to fill the jails. So they needed people to commit crimes. So they told them, if you rap about, committing crimes, um, basically committing crimes, then we, we will reward you because you're going to help us to fill the jails mm. by telling the people to commit the crimes. Yeah. So I think mm. this is it. Yeah. 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 Cause, um, there was a, have you, have you heard of the movie, uh, the big short? Mm, I'm not a it's massive got, movie guy. That's okay. It's got Steve Carell in it and Christian Bale, and it's just about the movie of the uh, about the the time when the 2008 financial crash happened. Um, and there's the, there's the guy. His name's Michael Barry, and Michael Barry shorted the housing market or something along those lines he shorted something and um it crashed and and he made billions and billions of dollars and throughout um covid his his name or the that whole time frame of that three years um 
Michael Barry's name come up and they said about what he's withdrawn his money from and, you know, what, what is he still invested in? And, you know, they mentioned a few different things, but they, they said, you know, he's pulled his money out of this, 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 this. Um, but he still had, I think, 5% of his worth in, in private prisons. And, and I just was like, like hearing that, that literally says that this guy that was responsible for the he wasn't responsible for it but he betted on it and he made money that it's pretty clear that like there's money in having people in prison you know and it's like oh wow like and you just go up and it's like oh well the whole system is designed to break up the family unit you know to ruin that like that's why i, I don't know look i don't want to um what's the best way to put it I think that that's why it's sort of like that there's so much comfort in today's world where they just they just want you to sort of be the average so you struggle which then sort of makes you you know like we, we know that there's double demerits and where you get fined for speeding and you know your mobile phone and it's like there's they're, they're always coming after us, right? They're always coming after the people. And, and you know, so when you put, put things in the realm of, well, hey, like, do they want to just, doesn't matter what, if you are really a criminal, they just want people in the jails because people make money. Then you sort of go, well, yeah, they are. And it's like, you start like, you know, literally being aware of this and asking the questions of it. And it's just like, is this the fucking world I live in? And it just, it just, man, it blows my mind. It blows my mind. Like I would never have thought that, you know, and, and this whole story and everything we're talking about now that goes into it, you're just like, like, this is all wrong. Like it shouldn't be this way. You know what I mean? Like it should be. Yeah. 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 And it's like, it's, it's <laughs> here's us two talking about it. And it's, you know, I had this conversation with someone at the dinner table. They don't care. They they prefer to talk about married at first sight or whatever. And you're just like, no, oh, man, I, I want to talk about this cool shit because it's like, I can't believe I live in this fucking in this world today. Um, yeah. But yeah, did you want me to just play a little bit of this or no? I don't really have to. Well, do I? I mean, check it out. He, he he'll probably reiterate a couple of the points we've made. But um, I mean, it goes for twelve minutes. Like, just have a little flick through, man, if you want to. You can always yeah, cut yeah. it out. Yeah. The secret meeting that changed rap music and destroyed a generation. Damn. So it says, hello. After more than 20 years, I finally decided to tell the world what I witnessed in 1991, which I believe was one of the biggest turning points in popular music. And ultimately, American society. I have struggled for a long time weighing the pros and cons of making my story public as I was reluctant to implicate the, the individuals who were present that day. Mm. So I've simply decided to leave out the names and all the details that may risk my personal well-being and that of those who were, like me, dragged into something they weren't ready for. <clears throat> Damn. Hold on, let me... Uh... So we're going to tell a story. We're going to tell a story. So... Look, this is someone literally telling the story, right? So it's got to be, it's got to be believable. And um, like, man, I, I'm, I'm surprised that this video, like, this is the first time I've actually seen, seen this video and sort of heard this sort of side of it. But like, mm -hmm. I'm surprised this thing, man, has not just gone all around the internet and just really like, literally expose it all. Yeah, when, yeah. Uh, so, the, and do you know what the funny thing is, man? Like. Um, so crazy bone and like if you look at the song titles and like the subject matter because i was I, I used to listen to a lot of bone thugs in harmony man um what, like their, their big songs are like mo murder the, the hook goes mo murder mo murder mo murder so they literally took the instructions from this meeting that they had and literally went and wrote the instruction manual to get yourself put in jail Wow! Like, all the boys in my hood, we all used to listen to it. It's it's Mo Murder, and like I see you at the crossroads. Um, like talking about dying, talking about killing. It's all crime spree shit. But it was mm. like such a heavily, um, such a heavy, consistent theme that was th through their album. Like, I mean, it it was as if 
to just you know uh, compare it to just say I made a whole album about doing burnouts. Well, they made a whole album about how to get people in jail. Mm. Do you know yeah. what I mean? It was it was on brand and it was and it was by design. It wasn't, it, yeah. And before that, it was all all public enemy and not all, but mm. they were a lot of them were, were were rapping to uplift their community and to, and mm. to give knowledge because hip hop was designed to spread knowledge and it was actually invented as an alternative to crime mm. to keep people off the streets. And so then they flipped it back on them and got them to start um, encouraging people to go back and and commit the crimes maybe i guess maybe the crime rates were dropping maybe like the the conscious rap and the political rap was actually you know changing them and bringing them together and, and uplifting the community and they wanted to put an end to that so they built the 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 private prisons as a business and what have you and um yeah needed a bit of marketing to get people in there wild shit man yes you, you saying all of that just reminded me of um biggie small song give me the loot and yeah. where he talks about like going on the train and robbing people and i'm just like thinking shit maybe biggie was you know spitting it as well i think biggie um, was an actual street guy but that that give me the loot that song is actually a very well written song do you know he plays two characters in that song and he, and he switches his voice he goes back and forth between um two alter egos of himself talking himself into going to commit the crimes arguing but then joining forces with himself like so he yeah it's it's a very very interesting song and he changes his tone and his cadence when he switches between characters and he's talking to the other version of himself but then they they're on the same team yeah it's a wick it's a wicked what, song man what so that other voice is his it's only Biggie on the track. He's doing both characters the whole track. Get out of it. Yeah, man. Are you serious? 100%. I never knew that, man. I thought it was like some just short guy next to him. No, no. It's, yeah, yeah. It's uh, Biggie. Uh, it's. Not it, you... Go. What were you saying? No, no. Play it. Yeah. Motherfuckers better know. I'm a bad <laughs> Lock your windows, close your doors, get your smalls. Huh. Yeah. I'm a bad, bad, bad. My man Kemp left a tech and a nine at my crib. Turned himself in, he had to do a bid. A one to three, he'd be home the end of 93. I'm ready right? to get this paper, G. You with me? Motherfucking right? My pockets looking kind of tight. Him. And I'm stressed. Yo, Biggie, let me get the vest. No need for that. Just grab that's the him. fucking gat, the first pocket that's him. back, Never take knew. it to his back, word is born, I'ma smoke him, yo don't fake no moves, what? treat it like boxing, stick and move, stick and Nigga, move, you ain't got to explain Thanks. shit. That's the nigga that's getting screwed and bruised up from the pistol whipping, webs on the neck from the necklace stripping. Then I'm dipping up the block and I'm robbing bitches too. Up the heron bones and bamboos. I wouldn't give a fuck if you're in error. Give me the baby rings and the number one mom pendant. Huh. The I word that he bleeped like out there was pregnant. I don't give a fuck if you're pregnant. That Like that, the word that was reversed was, I don't give a fuck if you're pregnant. Um... <clears throat> Yeah, it's vicious. Yeah, bro. yeah, yeah. That 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 loop back on the record. No, that was them reversing the word pregnant. That was it. Yeah, that part. Go back. It'll make sense if you know that. I don't give a fuck if you're pregnant. You made a baby rings and a necklace. Like, yeah, that sounds like it's just a, a the record rewinding. Yeah, yeah. To hide the word pregnant because it was a bit like oh. too hardcore. Didn't want it like he, he must have had morals to you know like but they uh, but a lot of old records have um parts in reverse in it like the old Beatles records used to have um uh subliminal messages that you could only hear if you played the record in reverse you'd find it yes yes so you're familiar with uh subliminal messages in yeah within music yeah nice um let's keep going where is it um baby rings and the number one mom pendant huh. i'm slamming niggas like shaquille yeah, shit is real. 
eat a meal. I rob and steal, cause mom Duke ain't giving me shit. So for the bread and butter, I leave niggas in the gutter. Huh, word the mother, I'm dangerous. Crazier than a bag of fucking angel dust. When I bust my gas, motherfuckers take dirt naps. I'm all that in a dime sack. Where the payback? Yeah, Oh man, you're pretty um you're pretty deep into this, eh? I, 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 you know, yeah, man. I used to be I used to be so obsessed. I mean, I still am obviously obsessed with rap, but before I used to make rap, I was the most fanatical, obsessed fan that you would ever meet. Like, I used to collect like American gangster rap CDs mm. and I'd go through the track list and anybody that was featuring on it, I'd have to like get, go get their album and like so – it just turned into a spider web and I and I just collected. I just loved it. As you can see, I've got your Instagram up. I was gonna say if I flick through here, is there any anything you want me to play of of one of these? And then maybe we could um get uh did you send me did you send me that um that instrumental of the Hilltop Hood song? Um the burnout section instrumental. Yeah, no, did you wanna think... did you wanna did you wanna spit some? Um spit yeah, some I don't water? know if I'll spit I don't know if I'll spit that. Um I mean I could. Um yeah, did no, yeah, no, I, did you want to play something your end or um will it come through like good with the sound? Yeah, didn't we do we we, we done a test, didn't we? Yeah, we did a little test. Did you want me to um, play yeah, yeah. Uh, did you want me to play one of uh, which one was it? I think it was um, – trying to think. What's this one? I'm trying um, to think. That, I don't want to click one thing if it's not a song, but I'm just trying to figure out which one did I did I see. Am I oh, moving too quick? No, no, no. You're cool. You're cool. I, I won't wrap along one. with any of these, but you can, you can play them if you want. I chill kill time on the mezzanine That's why I still ill rhyme cleverly Producing and choosing my music like therapy Attending the sessions quite regularly Used to be seven, now eight, nine or ten a week My tunes are my friend and me Beats on repeat, keep my feet off the street No sesame But I know how the pain felt Locked in a thought, caught in a brain cell Could have made a wish with a change But she ain't well Everything I got was hot Sun raised hell Another day, another dollar I spent On another taste and his off his head Another raid, another warrant, hooked on hammer, that's a nail in a coffin. That, um, is that your studio there? No, nah, that's just my house, man. I want to find, that, I want to just, find the just... one that, that I've seen. I'm just going to quickly flick. No, go for it. I got that fire in my soul. All right, it's not that one. I think it is. I think you're wearing. I think it's this one. I'm having one of them days, stay out of my way and give me something to break. I'm having one of them days, just one of them days, I've got nothing to say. I'm having one of them days, stay out of my way, you'll get a punch in the face. I'm having one of them days, just one of them days, I don't want to be awake. I'm having Where did, who does your... It wasn't that one. I want to I want to find it and play. Who, who who how do you get all your um all your music like uh, do you create that or do you buy like those sort of samples and stuff or okay, so that that particular beat I got off Beat Stars which is just like a, a site um that is just all beats all producers all beats and then you find a beat that you like you write a rap to it you can yeah. you can either like pay like a higher price to be the only person that owns that beat, or you can lease it. They call it leasing, where it's non-exclusive. Um, so that particular beat, I mean, I just uh, like I do make beats, but I much prefer to write to an existing beat because if I'm producing the beat, then I can change so many things, and like I've got so many options, and it kind of 
I don't know. It's just a little bit distracting. Like I've wrapped on plenty of my own beats that I've made and I've sold many, many beats and I've made many beats um, for other people to rap on. Like it, it's not an issue of quality or sound or, or being able to achieve what I need to. Um, it's just a matter of like trying not to wear too many hats during one creation process. Yeah. Yeah. So like yeah. most, like a lot, like, so that beat I bought, like I paid for, um, uh, you know, the, like the the remixes obviously they're commercial beats that i'm just borrowing um this that one that you almost clicked on that go down a bit uh, that, that, one? You were. That, that yeah that well, one there I, so that one there so that's actually a really a pretty decent verse like um can we play it Oh, you can if you want. You to leave now. Shut the door behind you, bro. I'm about to chuck the key out. I don't want a Lambo when I'm riding through the streets. Give me a Nissan Patrol, cranking music filled up with diesel. Bird brain pull up in a speedboat. Lavis got that cocoa popping by the kilo. Dropping up a hundred bag. Brother, where the mullet's at? Me, no cap. Wife beat her in a bucket hat. They want beef while I'm working on my tan. Ah, Fight dirty in the surf, that's a sandbar. Your mom's a fan, son. She knows I'm a fresh cunt. Your dad was acting tough till I yock him with a neck punch. <laughs> SG, I'm the boss of the S3, test me, get found dead like Epstein, that's deadly, it. No, gonna pass it. straight to the Red that's Sea, it. pull out yeah. harder than Jason Gillespie, I think your missus got wet feet, airplane mode, so the bitch don't text me, bar so hot, press play, drip sweat beats, my dogs drown in a wake on my jet ski, jet ski, big boat, chillin' by your beach, Time for you to oh, leave now. I shut the door behind you, bro. I'm down to chuck the key out. I don't want a Lambo when I'm riding no. through the streets. Give me a Nissan Patrol, crank the music, build up with diesel. And look, bird brain pull up in the speedboat. Lab has got that cocoa. Um, is this still going? The same song? It's on loop. Yeah. So, no cap. So, yeah. So, that's that's the song that I laughed as soon as you said, um, yeah, uh, about being dead like Epstein. Yeah, that's, yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. yeah. That was one of the songs I started cracking up. Um, but what's the the jet ski the jet ski song? Because I've I've yeah, actually so that's, seen that. that is the jet ski song, right? So the guy that's in the corner of that, his name's yeah. Lavez. Shout out Lavez. He's my he's my little mate in Melbourne, my little homie. Um, yeah, is, can you see that? Hang on. Yeah, that's the song. That's the song there. So okay, yeah, because I've I've actually seen this and I was like, oh, because I used to have a jet ski, and I was yeah, like, mad, I, mad, I, mad. I, yeah, I screen recorded. I screen captured it because I was like, oh, I want to ask you what what's that because I've I've seen it a couple of times. But yeah, continue. Yeah, yeah. So Lavez, um, he's me mate from Melbourne, and um, we we just crossed paths on TikTok earlier this year, and um, you know, he was liking my raps, I was liking his raps, and then and then we just ended up having a chat, and he's like, yeah, you want to jump on it on a on a track with me? And I'm like, yeah, cool, man. Send it through. Um, and this is a situation that I I, I wind up in a fair bit. Um. Sometimes I take them up on the offer. Sometimes I don't. And he sent through basically a fully written song called Jet Ski. And he's rapping about Nissan patrols and jet skis. And um, like the, the basic thing about it is like it's got a fairly Aussie-ish kind of vibe. And he's saying, um, I, I just want to rap about like what I want, not what I have. I'm not going to pretend that, that that I have. And then he's like, I want a jet ski, big boat. And he, and he just lists all his stuff out. So he basically – set me up for the alley-oop he's like hey man do you want to get on this track with me i've written the chorus i've written my verse all you have to do is write a verse and so um it, it's it's actually uh quite a juxtaposition to come in in on a collab on because they've done all the hard work they've thought of the concept they've picked the beat they've written all their parts and all you have to do is fill in the gap so um i actually quite enjoy doing that and um so i was like yeah man i'm down and Epstein just happened to rhyme with jet ski, didn't it? <laughs> okay. All right. Yeah. Yeah. yeah I, wrote out about, I wrote out about 200 um, combinations of words that rhymed with jet ski, right? Yeah. And then, and, and, I, and I whittled it down to, um, you know, Gillespie, Epstein. I, I just whittled it down to things that I thought were relevant because I'm really big on wordplay and I, I don't like to put any filler in, in, in my verses. Like, even if there's a line where you're like, oh, why did he say that? Well, if you go back and do a bit of word association, you're going to find some Easter eggs. And that and that's sort of my thing. So, um, yeah, that was really fun, that Jet Ski song. Um, and, yeah, Lavez and I actually did – so we, we worked on Jet Ski. We did that. And then while we were doing it, I was because like, that's an original song. He, he paid for the, the lease on the beat and everything. And um, 
it's on Spotify and all that. But while I was working on it, and I, I did the mix and master on it, and in between that, I was like, "Hey, bro, we should we should do a remix at the same time, man, just to get get a bit of traction, get a bit of reach, like because there's something special about remixes that people love the familiarity of hearing like a nice beat if you choose the right beat, and then when you put your own spin on it, um, yeah, it, it, it's fun. It's fun to create and it's fun to listen to. So um, I'll show you. You'll see it." Other ones where it's the split screen where it's um, Lavez and I um, on the screen, um, and we and we we did a remix on a very famous uh, Snoop and Dre beat, which which also got remixed by um, Big Pun and Fat Joe. I think it's the best beat that's ever been fucking made. Like in, in the it's the greatest beat in the world. Like you put it on and within a second your face screws up because it sounds so nice. The beat, um, it's it's the one where we're back to back. Uh, the beat is just so tough and i was like bro we should we should make a remix on this beat and drop it at the same time or a week before or a week after we drop jet ski um you're welcome any other fucking um rappers that are listening because that's actually a really smart you know promo strategy to drop a remix when you drop a track you're welcome um so we did that and they both landed quite nicely and so the remix song that we did that's on the burnout section remix Oh, sorry, Burnout Section Mixtape, which is 14 remixes um, that you get with a T-shirt when you buy this shirt here. Quick um, shameless plug, but yeah, <laughs> that wasn't planned. Just stumbled into that one. No, nah, brother, that was a um, that was a good plug. Um, mm. I'm going to go back. Yeah. Yeah, we, we, we go back and forth now. Right? Get up on a map, you tighten the left one. Your baby mama revs up when she dressed up. She prepped up the web puff that she left ya. Step one, get yourself some bread, get your friends some. Better come prepared if you wanna fuck with the best time. I'll be sitting on my throne till my legs numb. Till I cop that missing patrol, I've been trying to rev one. You don't like the price that I sent ya. Find your tight car, no ride, I'll fight Jester. Tagging titties with a fat white text up. Go motor motor by your fat white step up. And your auntie, how did she talk? You up at the party, she picked me up, I got in the car, let's in a heartbeat. How much for a feature depending on who's asking? Neighbors getting pissed off, full volume blasting. You half step, then I'm breaking your right leg, cut. Try getting up and I'm amputating the left one. Your baby mama revs up when she dressed up. She prepped up the wet puff that she left ya. Step one, get yourself some bread, get your friends some. Better come prepared if you want. remix city um when i realized like people were enjoying my my remixes and i've actually been making remixes for a very 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 long time um and i kind of forgot how well they land because i haven't done a live show for a little while um because of covid and also having a thousand kids um but when i was doing like shows regularly i would always include really famous really commercial beats and they always land so beautifully so i've just brought that back into my um my sort of what i'm doing really and it, it, it's so much fun and they write themselves man i can like that nosebleed section i wrote, wrote that first verse that went so viral i wrote that in like half an hour let's get it fired up what do you reckon oh um you want me to spit it? No, 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 I don't know. What do you want to do? Do you want to? Do you want to? Oh. Do you want to spit? How much time? How much yeah. time have you got? Mate, fucking, I've everyone's asleep, mate. How much time <laughs> have you got? <laughs> nah, cool. I'm good. This, I'm, I'm good. This, smashed, end. I've just smashed my tea. Um, yeah, which, um, yeah, well, it won't put me in la la land, but it's, um, it's oh, not like sleep? you know, and at the time. time I wanted to sip on it as as we started and, and, and got into it. So I'm sort of just um is sort it, of is just it, uh blending. Is it, a relaxing? In now. Is it caffeine yeah, or I, is it a relax? Huh? What's that? What is it caffeinated tea or is it a relaxant type uh, tea? Uh, it's well <clears throat> there's one thing that's actually in it that um that I might not say first what's in. Um but uh there's 
So it's herbal tea. So it's got um, skull cap, passion flower, and skull cap, passion flower, and something else. But I used to put this other thing called valerian root in, valerian, but I've, I've actually ran out. But I've got this. Um, this is going to sound weird when I say this, and I, I could. I just add, I added that into it because I'm I'm doing something in a couple of days where I just sort of want that gut biome, just you know friendly charged. I could have just said that on air; it doesn't matter. But you know, people people could probably take it out of context and think, "Ooh, you know what's that?" But um, I'm a firm believer that um, that that you know that uh, different foods can can cause certain things through the through the gut biome and that not so much the way I'm going to say it but just a way of maybe it's sort of up for translation on 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 how do you best describe something but I think that there's a parasite within all of us and that parasite is something of quite possibly a entity or a something that may be able to hijack us um, where we are not living the life that we truly wish for ourselves. So it may be, you know, like for, for an example, like I've, I've ate two blocks of chocolates before and I've gone to the fridge to get some water, which sounds weird. Why would you drink? eat chocolate then drink water why, why don't you eat chocolate and chew down some pepsi max but i went to the fridge and i just like i just had like this this flow of thoughts and and these thoughts were were rather fucking horrible and i was just like where did that come from and i'm just mm. like i wonder because i engulfed these two blocks of chocolate and you know I'm like I'm not not gonna get the microscope for the check, but I, I I I believe that it was the chocolate, right? So if if I've had this experience, could this be possible that other food is also doing this to me? And you know, when you start to go through, you know, routes of fasting and all of these other things, like you know, you can feed something whether it's a feeling of I'm hungry. Um, I I'm sort of going to rewind a little bit here in, in explaining this differently because I'm going to tie in something that happened to me the other day. But but basically, uh, the other day I'd done a video of, because um, I'd done like two 20-hour fasts, like on Wednesday and on Thursday or whatever day. And, uh, <clears throat> and I was getting these cravings of oh i'm 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 hungry but it wasn't the fact that that you're actually hungry it's 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 the come down you know mm. so we so we we feel that we're hungry so we eat but we're not we're not eating because we're hungry we're getting this gut come down from whatever's in in the food and and that is the parasite starving so so yeah so um when i'm going through these faster types of ones like i put you know, certain things in my, in my teas, just, just to, um, fill in the blanks. So, so yeah. Gotcha. Yep. No, I know exactly what you mean, man. I've done fasting. I've done 24 hour fasts. I've done, um, the OMAD thing I've done. Don't eat until after 12. Um, uh, I watched the, the Chris, uh, the Chris Hemsworth, um, doco where he did the fasting, the cold thing. And, and that really inspired me. Mm-hmm. So I did a 24 hour fast the next freaking day and man, I was energized, bro. Like, yeah. um, and I've just got started getting back into cold showers and like, I can feel my dopamine like stores, like rising. Like I'm just more motivated to do just, just anything. Like I'm just happier, just less stressed. Like, so yeah, and I, like I'm picking up what you're putting down and I, like, I, I get, the, uh, I'm, I'm quite tuned into, um, uh, what you were saying about frequencies as well. Um, I want to speak to you about your friend that owns the supplement store as well, maybe after this, like, cause I want to get hold of some lines main and a couple other different things. Um, so yeah, I'd love to uh, see if you can help me out with that. But um, 
yeah, that'd be sick. But yeah, no, I'd love to pick your brains and all that sort of stuff, man. Because I, I have dabbled and like I, I, it comes and goes in, um, in cycles with me. Like I'll, I'll do something like uh, I'll get into like a one meal a day diet and uh, it'll be great. And then if I'm 100% honest with you, it, it'll be like a birthday will come along. I'll get on the piss. I'll have a big weekend. And all of a sudden I think I just need to eat because I'm hungover. And then I forgot that I was, I was, on the one meal a day diet and then all of a sudden it's been two or three days and you're i've just forgotten that i was doing it and it's really hard to get back to it if you're not like obsessed with trying to get back to it and then all of a sudden your life just goes on and you're like oh remember back when i was fasting and i'm um, doing the omad and having the cold showers yeah i should do those again because i was a bit happier at that point what life do you want to live what version of life what version of self do you want to live my best, oh, I mean, that's a very. But open, but, but to like, those, can you can you, can you can you can you define the question a little bit more specifically? Though? Well, because you gave me you gave me something that you were doing. You're t telling me something that you're doing, and then you you got on the piss, and then you started. You ate. Yeah. So so do you do you do you want that one before you got on the piss, or do you want that that one that comes after? where you are oh, that's what i was doing because you were you were living a life that you you notice this change and this difference but then you like to say like you get you could go back to old habits or old programming or, or stuff stuff like that so it's like well you, you sort of went back to this old way then went on this different timeline of that version of self where you took you a while it's like oh actually i was doing that before right so um so yeah that's that was the question of okay did you want uh, to do yeah. that or yeah okay so i totally understand the question and the answer is probably not what you will be expecting because the certain moments where i i do want to live that life where i'm one meal a day fasting once a week cold shower every day even you know plunge baths etc like i love that version and then I don't like the version of being hungover, but I do like bonding socially with my friends and my family while I am enjoying, you know, a beverage and a celebration. And I do want to celebrate people's birthdays um, because the sometimes the 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 strength of the bond that that you experience in that moment shifts you to a different timeline where you're so the sense of community so i think it's it's all about it it's a, it's finding a happy medium where you can do a little bit of all of it and each doesn't take away from each other they add to each other mm. that's the best life i'd like to live yeah well look you can still do it just don't forget what you're doing before um exactly exactly yeah and and you know that's very familiar with um you heard of liver king yeah yeah i've heard of him i haven't like I'm not a big scroller. Like I'm, I'm usually too busy working on something. I don't spend a whole lot of time consuming. Yeah. But I've, yeah. I've heard bits and pieces of the Liver King. Yeah, yeah. Well, he's got the nine tenets, um, you know, and like you know, bond and shield and um, just all these different types of things about sticking. You know, getting the sunlight, cold exposure, and they all, all represent you know battle and fight and all of these things so there's there's nine ancestral tenants and I, and i'm pretty certain that every piece of that and every version of yourself that appears out of those two examples you you gave me would fit under the category of the the nine ancestral tenants right but it's like um you know <clears throat> can we can we live that life of cold exposure and fasting you know, a day after consuming alcohol, after we are in that family bonding and celebrating with friends and, and stuff like that. Can we can we just go back onto that or, you know, is it just a um a matter of just going, well, you know, what what works and what makes me happy and just do what makes me happy and that's it. As long as you're not hard on yourself. See, that's that's something that I sort of struggle with is that I I get caught in like this identity of things where like say if I was to do what uh, you said that I'd, I'd beat myself up over it. 
like I'd beat myself up and I'd be like, oh, you know, and you'd feel like shit and you feel even worse. And then, and then you start like, then you start going on that timeline and then that timeline then becomes depression and then you get depressed. And then it's like, ah, uh, then you, you just, you know, I, I, um, <clears throat> you know, as I've told you, like I have a drunk now for, uh, for four and a half years, I was just going to say four years, six months, um, but four and a half years. And, you know, along the way, I've just realized that I'm a fucking addict, you know, um, I'm an, I'm an addict to not drinking. I'm an addict to drugs. I'm an addict to food. I'm an addict to excuses. I'm an addict to all of these things, you know, and, um, you know, while I'm a, I'm, I'm an addict, I, I have to do things that aren't going to put me in this constant, uh, wheel of suffering you know because my addictions make me suffer and what my addictions also make me do is i i'll shame myself which further buries me into the addiction so you know like i might say to myself oh well today i ate shit like i ate not literal shit you eat pieces <laughs> of shit for breakfast <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm fasting. <laughs> you know, so like, I, like I might go, ah, oh, fuck, I'm down on myself. I feel like shit. Oh, fuck. Okay, tomorrow I'm going to start. Tomorrow, okay, what am I going to do? Okay, well, I fucked up today, so tomorrow. So I'll be like, I'll go to work, I'm going to fast. And you might think, well, I'll get a coffee or I'll do this or do that. And, and, and you might get to a certain time. And you go, oh, well, look, I fasted for 18 hours, 16 hours. I'm going to go to the cafe. Yeah, I'm all right. I'll be all right. I'm going to go to the gym, right? So... I'll fuck a fast up by going to a cafe thinking I deserved it. And then after it, I then bring in all these excuses, which then leads me to five o'clock, six o'clock in the afternoon to then eating again because I've shamed myself because how I ate at the cafe that I regretted, you know? So, so yeah, yeah so I've sort of, man, I've been dealing, I've been dealing that with, with, you know, not drinking and stuff. And it's only, since I've been speaking to people that know about food and, and teaching me about stuff, uh, I've done like a juice fast retreat and, you know, I've spoken to them and, and there's some stuff that they've said to me, which stick. Um, and one of these things are like, you know, before you do something that's going to make you feel like shit, you know, can you, can you, can you say that to yourself where it's like, because of the ego, you sort of tell yourself that you've got control so it's like, ah, it's not going to happen like last time. It's not going to happen like last time. But it happens exactly like last time because that's the program and that's, you know, that's that's your hard wiring, right? So I've been able to just set these small little seeds for myself and these little bits of these foundations where I sort of now have a bit more control where there's no more shame eating. The, the addiction's not food anymore. The addiction is just like trying to find that let's just live a better life and let's be happy and it's but but you get caught in this identity and and the identity is like that i don't deserve that right so you just add all of this other fuckery and 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 it's like you know the food the some of the shit that goes on in the world you know it's just it can become like this fucking terrible tangled web that you just get yourself in and it's very hard to escape but yeah man it's it's all about just i don't know I, I i look at it in a way again i use that example of the parasite and understanding that and then vibration and frequency and things around energy and what to disconnect from and what to consume what not to consume what can alter your perception of reality what can take you down you know dark rabbit holes i know don't go down Illuminati rabbit holes because that can fucking twist you up a little bit and it can subliminally program and mind fuck you more. So, um, so yeah, so it's all to me, it's, um, you know, I think my mind over the last four and a half years has just been like this relearning of, you know, <clears throat> um, relearning of something that I feel that I already knew because I've, I constantly keep removing the shit like fluoride, like shit in toothpaste, the shit in water, like filtering the water. Yes, I do the ice bath. Yes, I fast. And it's like, I don't put products on me. And it's like, 
the more you remove from all of this shit that's just constantly putting this thing to mess up your your body's actually at could you, you go what were you say no no i'm listening man yeah um the more we we keep suppressing and putting all of these shits on us uh, shit on us like these chemicals and metals in sprays and stuff body body sprays and it, we're just dumbing down we're dumbing down our own vibration our own energetic field and um and you know we can associate with people that are negative and we can take that energy on and then our life can can become negative right so um so yeah so you know just i don't know man i feel that when you when you are hijacked by darkness with with alcohol um that your whole entire body and mind can be can be completely hijacked and taken control of and and i think once you let go of that you start to see more of the light you know and you start to just steer towards something else that makes more sense but yeah it's um i don't know if i'm just rambling on here uh, <laughs> but, but 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 yeah so um so yeah man so it's just um yeah i've sort of uh yeah there's a, there's a lot of there's a lot i learn and there's a lot that is fucking mind bl mind blowing you know like a, as we're talking about with the you know um the music and the frequencies with that and the police sector like there's just layers upon layers upon layers upon layers upon layers within the 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 the, the, the fabric of what we think our reality in our world actually is and it's not it's not it's that no nah. yeah i'll give you that um uh i think we are all hardwired to be addicted to like habits um things we consume liquids foods you know uh thought processes emotions i think we're addicts by design uh for survival because if we weren't addicted to water or sunlight then we'd probably die a bit quicker stuff like that but i think that yeah what you said with the hijacking um so like we're in a perfect world or all, all our addictions would be only things that benefit us but then um you know there's all these other things that exist that are unhealthy and it's all by design man like i mean we could probably get stuck into that but we could probably do that on a different podcast because we probably won't end this if we get to go too far <laughs> in this direction do you know what i mean but yeah. um yeah no we're on the same page man um mm. yeah so but at the same time like i think yeah, I think every I think everything is addictive, whether mm. it's good, bad, whether it's light, heavy. I think, and I think it's meant to be addictive. I think we're meant to be addicted, and I think addiction might not be the right word, but addiction is the right word for certain substances and habits. Addiction should have a negative connotation, but there should also be a positive version of addiction. Maybe it's uh, good habits. You know, maybe there is words for it, but. Um, yeah, I think people need to be a lot more careful than they realize. And um, yeah, uh, this world definitely isn't what they portray it as. And a hundred percent, man. But dude, there's a um, there's a there's an app that I actually subscribe to called Gaia. Have you heard of it? Yep, 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 yep. Yeah. yeah. Oh, um, cosmic disclosure, man. Like, uh, and then all this meditation stuff, and like all sorts bro but yeah like i could go on for hours about it i've just paused my subscription because i've binge watched addict i've addiction watched uh everything that i'm really into on there and i've run out of episodes so i pause it for three months and i come back and i binge watch it again <laughs> but that's the same yeah. basically uh you know uh cements the point that we're talking about like you you can get just as addictive addicted to positive things that benefit you just as easily as you can get addicted to things that um neg negatively affect you uh i think people we need to be addicted to self-awareness so that we can you know navigate our way through these addictions because mm. at the end of the day everybody is addicted to many things mm. but yeah man did you want to spit one yeah, of your yeah. songs for sure bro I've, I've, I've got my instrumentals up here so i'm happy mm. to, to spit you a couple of raps 